is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video. Um, it's the middle of July now, I'm a little bit late in doing this video, but it's time for the end of June statistics. So yep, this video is going to go through what solar we've generated here in Norfolk, and uh, I'll give you an update on our system. And then also at the end, I'm going to compare to my brother's new system, a Give Energy system. So there's lots of information here, lots of great solar stats, and Today I came out for a walk over into the Norfolk Broads and I was going to film whilst watching the river and the boats going past and that sort of thing, but the wind was just a little bit too strong. So I filmed this instead. It's a view over Cantley, um, looking out over the Norfolk Broads, the Norfolk Marshes. It's a lovely sunny day, some beautiful blue skies with fluffy white clouds. It just reminds me of what this is all about and it reminds me of all this free energy that's coming down from the sky. And I know that annoys some people when I refer to it as free, but let's just talk about that for a moment as an introduction to this video before I give you the stats. We all love a bargain, don't we? Whether it's just a good buy, whether it's on offer, or whether it's something for free, we're always keen to do that smart thing, save a few pounds here or there. Sometimes it's not really about the money, it's just that feel-good factor that you're doing the right thing, or it just feels normal to do it. Whether it's petrol's on offer and you go to somewhere we wouldn't normally go because it's slightly cheaper. Whether it's collecting rainwater because rainwater's for free from the sky, so you buy a water button, a diverter, and use that. Whether you've got an electric car and you get a free charge, I mean, who doesn't like a free charge? Solar panels, home storage batteries... They're the things that collect and store the free energy that's coming from the sun. So for me, it's just like collecting rainwater. It seems obvious. There's this free resource out there. And if you're not taking advantage of it, you're not being very smart. So it just seems obvious to me. And just like the other things in life that are for free or good deals or bargains, it just feels right to go for it. Now, I understand a lot of people will say, you know, solar is expensive. Solar panels are expensive. It's hard to install. And then the home storage batteries are even more expensive. I, I know all of those things. So the, they don't think it's for free. But life's about choices, isn't it? And most of the things we do, we do because it makes us feel good. So we spend a lot of money. And you know, I'm no different from other people. The more you earn, the more you spend. And we spend it on stuff that makes us feel good. Now, whether we lavish it on our children and that makes us feel good, whether we buy designer clothes, perfumes, have nice haircuts, jewellery, sunglasses, you name it, we spend money on stuff to make us feel good. Well, solar panels and home storage batteries make me feel good, and that's where I'm choosing to spend my money. And here's a great example that I saw while watching the boat come down the Norfolk Broads. This couple here, or this family, had chosen to have a holiday on the Norfolk Broads. It probably cost them a couple of thousand pounds in total, but it wouldn't be complete unless they bought a nice outfit, a nice white outfit with a captain's hat and braid bands showing that they're the captain. Of course, you know, I think they look like idiots, but it's completing their holiday. It's a bit of fun. They're enjoying themselves, and it's money well spent. So it's their choice. They could spend it. They could save it instead and buy solar panels. That's my point. We choose to spend money on whatever makes us feel good. Anyway, there you go. That's my preaching and moaning over and done with. On with the stats for the month of June. Let's start with a really good number, a record in fact, 1.45 kilowatt hours imported from the grid for the month of June 2023. Just one unit of electricity all month. That's cost us £11.87 pence on the Octopus Go tariff, including the standard charge, of course. That one unit of electricity was mostly at peak rates. So, yep, that's 36 pence average unit rate is what we've actually spent. Very, very happy with that result, of course. It's peanuts. I really don't mind. So if we look at this chart, this is just showing us all the different months that we've had solar and how much we've been importing from the grid. And uh, is a common theme when we get to the May, June, July, August time. It's often around 0, 1, less than 10 kilowatt hours imported from the grid. But this chart is an interesting one. Looking back for the last 90 days, it was 90 days ago that we actually imported from the grid overnight. And we imported more than 5 kilowatt hours. In fact, that's the first day we imported more than 1 kilowatt hour 90 days ago. So we've been three months now, at least three months, without using the grid. 
for overnight charging of electric cars, hot water, home storage battery, any of those things. We've just relied on solar energy. And hopefully we've got a few more months of that to go as well. Hopefully we'll have July, August, September, and at least half of October. That's what I'm hoping, that we'll be off the grid and using just solar energy. Talking of solar generation, that's 1.2 megawatt hours of generation for the month of June, 1,194 kilowatt hours. And on the day by day here, you can see there's two, four, eight, nine days over 50 kilowatt hours and one, two, three, four, is that four days under 20 kilowatt hours. Pretty good month overall. Not a record for us, but still pretty good. If we look here at the chart that shows us all of the months that we've had solar generation, you can see it's quite up there. You know, it's third or fourth best that we've had so far. But yeah, not a record this month. This chart's a good one because it breaks it down by colour, by the array that we have. So our 3.9 kilowatt array is in blue. The new array, which is the east-facing gable, and the three panels on our garage is in red. And the green, that's our solar edge array, 2.4 kilowatts. Individually, the arrays are looking like this, 259 kilowatt hours. That's the um, latest array that we put in with our east facing panels and the three panels on our gable roof. And you can see on the sunniest of days, we're getting around 10 or 11 kilowatt hours. And uh, yeah, on the uh, not so sunny days, you know, it's only just one or two kilowatt hours. So that's our smallest array hooked up to a 2.5 kilowatt solace inverter. So our main array, that's 3.9 kilowatts of panels on a 3.6 kilowatt solace inverter. That's 594 kilowatt hours this month. But did you see there, there's one day that's marked out as zero, and this is the day, the 20th of June. And there's data there, but it just doesn't have a number for some reason. So I don't know what solace have been doing. And our solar edge array for the month, 341 kilowatt hours. So looking at that data for previous Junes in previous years, over the right-hand side of this chart, we've got 2023. The left-hand side is previous years. 594 kilowatt hours for the blue line there, the dark blue line showing our main array is the second highest we've had. And it's the same for the other two arrays as well. It's the second highest that we've had in a June. So a very, very good month overall. Anything above 500 kilowatt hours on our main array, I think is very good, our 3.9 kilowatt array. That's my benchmark. Since we get into summer, 500 kilowatt hours plus is a really good month. This chart from Home Assistant is a good one. It's showing the same sort of data as the day-by-day um, -day solar generation, but it's showing our energy usage. So it breaks it down in terms of orange as to how much we've used and uh, purple how much we exported. And yep, we exported quite a lot especially on a few days in the middle of June. Basically, we were on holiday, so we didn't use a lot of energy. Export for the month was a whopping 572 kilowatt hours. Yep, so we exported 572 kilowatt hours. If I'd have just got 10 pence a kilowatt hour on that as an export tariff, that would have been 57 pounds. If I'd have averaged 20 pence a kilowatt hour, that would have been over 114 pounds of export generation that we could have had. So the fact I'm on the Octopus Go tariff and not an export tariff means that I'm losing money in these months. So it is a calculation that I'm going to be doing in the future, looking at something like the flux tariff to see how much money we could be making over the summer months and is it worth me being on an export tariff. One of the reasons why I haven't moved to an export tariff is because I haven't been able to find my documentation for the MCS certificate and the DNO approval. So because of that, I haven't applied for the export tariff yet. But now I have found that documentation, so I can now look at those tariffs. So if we generated nearly 1.2 megawatt hours and we exported almost half of that, that left us roughly 600 kilowatt hours of usage. So where did it go? 233 kilowatt hours went into our electric cars via the Zappi charger. Uh, 84 kilowatt hours went into hot water via the Eddy diverter. 67 kilowatt hours went in air conditioning. That's our heating system, our Toshiba heating air con system. 16 kilowatt hours went to the oven and hob for cooking, 15 kilowatt hours for our internet and home assistant hubs, 14 kilowatt hours for our main television, and further down, 8 kilowatt hours for our ensuite heater. Remember, the first week of June was actually quite cold, and I actually had some of the heaters on in our bathrooms. What a strange month. 
This is the temperature chart for the month, showing our lounge, hall, bedroom, garage, and loft temperature gauges. And as you can see over the left-hand side, the temperatures were a lot cooler, especially the loft. You can see that was ranging between 10 and 15 degrees mostly. But then you get to about the 11th of June, temperatures suddenly increase, and we get some warm weather. And the indoor temperatures, so you can measure those with the uh, lines in the middle, the light blue, the purple, and the blue, etc., they're quite consistent and quite steady. So we've been able to maintain the temperature in the house around 19, 20, 21 degrees quite consistently throughout the month. Looking at our hot water now with the Mixigy tank, this is how full the tank is of hot water. 100% means it's full and I haven't bothered at all to try and conserve this at all during the month. It's just been on free vent, shall we say, with so much solar energy. We've been uh, heating our hot water consistently just about every day. There's only a few days there where it went down to 60 or 40% overnight, but uh, boosted back up again with solar back to 100%. The actual temperature of our hot water peaks at around 57, 58 degrees C. And as you can see, most days, it's hardly going into the 40s. So, uh, yeah, we've had plenty of hot water, no issues whatsoever. This is the last chart for Mixergy, and it's showing that uh, for June we used 2,056 litres. Not bad compared to previous months. But now we have a smart meter on our mains water pipe. So we can actually see how much water we've used, not just hot water. So in June, Anglian Water are saying we used 4,620 litres. Knowing that that uh, 2,056 litres was hot water, then it shows me how much cold water we used. And in June, we actually used more water than April and May in total. So our cold water usage has been going up in June. I think I've been watering the garden a little bit. So this is our water consumption, colder and hot water for the month of June on a day by day basis. And you can see there the biggest day where I really did water the garden a lot, 450 litres in a single day. But there's a couple of days there where it's absolutely nothing. We're on holiday, so it's nice to know there are no leaks with no water consumption at all. What about that day in the middle? Neighbour came round and watered the plants for us. But before I end this video, time for something just a little bit different. Let's compare one system to another. My brother has just had a solar installation completed with home storage battery. It's very, very different to mine, but the results are quite surprising. So let's have a comparison. What he's got here is 20 Jinko 420 watt solar panels, all on a west facing roof. It's almost fully west, just slightly south, but they're all in one position. He reckons there's not a lot of shade, if any at all, so he's got a nice clear aspect. Where mine, I've got three different arrays, and they're in three different ways, and I've got some shade from the neighbor's house. So mine's a little bit more complicated, but I've got a little more solar power. He's got 8.4 kilowatts. I think I'm about 9.2. I'll do the math and put it on the screen now. He's got a 9.6 kilowatt give energy battery connected to a 5 kilowatt hybrid give energy inverter. And here's the specs for the inverter. So being a hybrid inverter, he's only going to get the maximum 8.4 kilowatts when he's charging the battery and providing power to other things, including the house. Once the battery is full, then he's not going to be able to use all of those 8.4 kilowatts of solar panels. It's going to be clipped at the top at the 5 kilowatt limit of the inverter. He's also only got a G98 DNO approval, so that's a 3.68 kilowatt limit on export, which, you know, sounds okay until you realize that if you're not using the power in the house and are generating more than 3.68 kilowatts, then you can't export it. So what happens to the energy? If it can't go into battery because the battery is full and you're not using it and you're not allowed to export it, well, you can't generate it. So the inverter has to clip it again. So there's a few more limitations on his system. So here's the stats of the two systems. I've got 9.2 kilowatts south facing with just 1.1 kilowatts uh, shaded of that and uh, 1.8 kilowatts east facing on a gable. Obviously, I get some shading on that as well. All of his are west facing 8.4 kilowatts and apparently no shading. I've got G99 approval. He's got the basic G98 approval, so can't export as much. I've got a 5 kilowatt AC connected uh, battery system. He's got a 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter for the solar, and that's what's connected for the battery as well. I've got 17.5 kilowatt hours of battery. He's got 10 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So how did they perform like for like last month in June?
generation for the month of June then 1183 kilowatt hours compared to my 1194 incredibly similar my highest day was 54 kilowatt hours his highest day 46 kilowatt hours that's probably the key indicator of potential between the two systems on the perfect sunny day and I think he had a few of them he was generating 46 kilowatt hours I can generate up to 54 kilowatt hours on the peak day. His lowest day was 16 kilowatt hours. Mine was 13. So yeah, some of this is going to be weather related. So let's have a look at that to try and understand how the weather differences between his system in Hampshire and mine in Norfolk affected those statistics. So this is his system on a day by day with my system overlaid above. You can see the start of the month. He's got more consistently high generation where I've got some low generation days. I think four or five, six, maybe even there. So that's partly why his system is at 1183 and mine's at 1196. If they were like for like on weather wise, I think mine would have outperformed slightly more, especially when I've got the 54 kilowatt hour highest day. But it's pretty damn close closer than I thought it would have been for a west-facing array. The import and export values are interesting too. I imported just one kilowatt hour. I made quite a bit of effort to achieve that though. He, with no extra effort, imported just eight kilowatt hours. So it looks to me like the give energy inverter is now better at balancing to the grid than it was when I tested it. Export wise, he exported a lot more, 729 kilowatt hours versus our 572. But of course he exported more. He's just starting on his solar journey. He's got the solar installed, but doesn't have anything to use it with apart from the normal house loads. He hasn't got an electric car yet. He's still driving a petrol car. He hasn't got electric heating yet. He's still got gas heating. Even the hot water is provided by gas. It's not on the immersion yet. So he is exporting a lot more and just starting the journey of now, how do I use that energy? It's all free. So what can I install? What can I get that will use more energy? That EV won't be far away, will it? And here's an example from his Give Energy system of one day where there was quite a lot of solar, but you can see the clipping quite clearly. As soon as his generation gets above five kilowatts and his battery's full, he's got nowhere else to put the energy. So it's getting clipped. I think these stats show, though, that clipping's not something to be afraid of. It doesn't affect you in a massive way, not all the time anyway. And when he's outside of these summer months, he's not going to get that clipping at all. So it would be very, very comparable to our own system. All in all, damned good system. And can you believe it? He spent about 5000 less than I did on mine. So people saying that solar and batteries are going up in price? Not necessarily, and not all systems give energy still pretty good value out there this system with all of the solar and the battery was fully installed for 15k that's it for the month of june then thank you so much for watching i hope there were some useful stats there for you to compare to your existing system or to help you choose if you're looking at going solar and home storage battery yourself as always thank you so much take care see you again soon for more videos Talking of other videos, I have actually had a problem with our air conditioning systems. Uh, they failed a little while ago, so I need to update you on that. And a sensor problem we've had, plus also I've been trying out a couple of bits of kit, so I'd like to update you on those. So I think I'll do a separate video on a technology update. Look out for that soon. Bye for now.